Good morning everyone. I'm back today with another video. Um, unfortunately with some good and some sad news. Um, nothing personal related to health and family, thank God, but um, to the gun law situation in Switzerland and in broader Europe, I guess, uh, at this point. So, um, as you may or may not know, I did a little follow-up on the Swiss gun uh, legislation, or rather the upgrade thereof, by the virtue of the fact that the European Union has released a new directive on firearms, which is impacting also Switzerland. Back then, we did my last update. Um, the Swiss government, um, more specifically the, um, the Federal Department of uh, Police and Justice, was drafting um, what would be the Swiss uh, update um, with regard to the European Firearms Directive. And we were in talks of implementing a so-called Lex Helvetica, which was to be like an exception uh, to be sort of um, that would take into account the fact that Switzerland has a militia army which allows you to take this one at home when you're done um, and hence yeah it would like this fact this tradition would be a priori a problem with regard to European's farm directive so you know us um, the, the gun community thought, okay, let's see what comes out of this. It already smelled like shit, and I can get gladly confirmed that back then I was right. It's indeed a lot of shit what the Federal um, Department of Police and Justice has pulled off on us. Um, let me specify that back then, in charge for the latter was um, a left politician, Simoneta Somaruga, uh, which is not to be trusted at all costs. Um, she's a very skilled politician with regard to what she does. She she's always able to turn around questions, and whenever she has like some Q and A with people, um, she always manages to just twist things around into making you believe that you don't have to worry. That she will take care of this. It's overestimated. You know, she appears really near people's concerns, but she's just a skilled politician. Now, thank God, she has transitioned uh, to another department. So she's still in the executive government. Uh, she's running some other stuff. I guess damage will come also from there, but perhaps not with regard to a gun community. Unfortunately, as we speak, um, there is someone new in charge who I think is better suited for this department, but she has inherited this lady, this fucking gun law that is uh, that will be... Uh, which we'll talk about later, and nothing can be done, okay? The parliament has voted on it, um, whatever. So, you know, we live in a world where we have to be pragmatic. Uh, things are going on which are not cool at all. We'll talk about them later, but uh, we are also happy that here in Switzerland people can take a stand against this shit, and also talk about it later. Um, so, where do we start? This time, uh, in order to be not as freestyle as usual, I prepared some little infographics uh, on the fly. As a working consulting, you can imagine that PowerPoint is my weapon number one. I didn't have time to do some fancy slides, uh, just some A4s with some um, some bullet points to make sure to give this video a structure and give you a little bit of added value if you take the time to watch through it. This video's mainly audience will probably be Swiss people or people interested in gun laws in Switzerland. I will talk about the as is situation, the to be under the new directive. Um, also the background, the supposed rationale behind this new law, um, the arguments the politicians bring about on the table, and really what's behind these arguments, you have at least two neurons that can connect to each other, okay? Why is it important? Uh, long story short, in Switzerland, whenever the government wants to do something and parliament has to draft a law on it, um, people can just, um, people in Switzerland have the right to oppose legislation with the uh, right of referendum. Referendum means comes from Latin. I don't know what it fucking means, but it just means that you can just put a veto on a law and it will not be passed. Okay. Um, the Swiss gun law, which was supposedly passed by the parliament uh, and which went through numerous rounds of expert committees, you can imagine what the fuck came out. Um, attracted a lot of critics and some gun lobby uh, embraced the referendum right, and I think you were supposed to gather 50,000 signatures in some months period, like in three months, something like this. 
Well, long story short, the gun referendum, um, the deadline was a couple of days ago, it attracted 125,000 signatures. Okay, so that's more than double the amount of the signatures that you need in even less time, okay? Uh, I think they talked about around 1,000 signatures arriving every day. So, um, you know, across the political spectrum, um, I don't think there was ever a referendum in Switzerland that attracted that many signatures and so much. Um, and, and that was so well received in history. This shows that probably this issue is uh, across the whole political spectrum. So it's probably not so, so much only a, um, a matter for the right-hand voters, but probably it also affects some voters in the middle and potentially on the left uh, for various reasons, which we'll talk about later. Nevertheless, with 125,000 signatures that were um, handed over to the, um, to the authorities, in, it means that people will vote on this law. In, on May 19, whole of Switzerland will vote whether they want to accept the new gun law or not. So this is the good news. The bad news is that you know politicians are skilled, the media is on their side, they're going to do everything they can just to you know, um, put fear into the heads of people, making them vote for the new gun law. But as the referendum shows, probably some people are sick on the whole gun issue. They, they're sick on the European issue. So, you know, for some reasons, probably there are more factors that are coming in and people see this referendum as a chance to just have a say on the broader situation. Not just only guns, which may be the tip of the iceberg, but also on the fact that the European Union just releases law by the minute, nonsense shit. And for one reason or another, um, well, thank God, not like many Euro European countries, but we have to take some of these laws for granted, which is retarding. Therefore, I'm optimistic that um, we'll have a nice debate on Europe and on guns in the next month. If you're watching this video because you're not so sure how to vote, uh, well, I doubt that people will take the time to go on, on YouTube, but um, I'm going to explain a bit the ASI situation with regard to the gun law now, uh, the 2B situation under the new directive, and then why we don't need change and why essentially the government is lying just to make you eat up the change uh, for other reasons. Um, all right, so infographic number one. As is, um, you can see that on the left-hand side, oh wait, fuck, on this side, um, Switzerland, when we first entered the Schengen Agreement, um, we had to take over the classification of firearms that they have, which doesn't really bother me that much. It also allows you to buy some shit um, on European online shops for the right category without having to go through paperwork, which is good. So, category A, is at the top. These are the coolest stuff, okay? Full auto guns or uh, full auto guns that have been converted to semi-auto. These guns are already prohibited under the, the status quo, okay? In Switzerland, this will be something like this. An HK416, select fire, prohibited. Then you have category B, semi-auto guns. Probably could be something like this, the civilian version, semi-auto SIG 550. And then you have category C, uh, and all of the remaining shit which I don't care about, which are essentially the bolt action rifle, straight pull, whatever you call them. What's the difference? Category A, essentially you need a special authorization to buy it, okay? Uh, category B, you need a standard permit, a purchasing permit it's called. It's not a permit to carry gun, like even some people in Switzerland, I don't understand this. In Switzerland you don't have permits to carry gun, okay? This is related to people who really need it, and not just uh, recreational stuff. You have a, a permit to purchase, that's what you need. So. At a given moment of time, uh, they just analyze if you're a criminal or not. If you're not a criminal, you can purchase the fucking gun, and that's it. In 10 years' time, if you become a criminal, probably they will find out they will confiscate your guns. But um, it's just not something that you need to renew. It's not something that you need to continue to prove. The assumption is that by the time you want to purchase it, they look if you're a criminal. If you're not, you buy it, and it's your fucking business how you deal with it, and which I like. For the category C and so on and so forth, you don't need any authorization, just your ID to show probably if you're 18 or 16 or whatever the fuck you are. Um, okay, so, um, I said category A, you need a special authorization. What is it? Uh, category B, uh, standard authorization. This is the as-is situation with regard to authorization. I don't know if you can read it. Um, 
So special authorization to buy full auto stuff is uh, needed whenever you're trying to purchase something that is prohibited. Category A guns, as per European Union, are prohibited and in theory you cannot buy them. So if you want to buy them, you need a special authorization to buy prohibited stuff. Um, the f at federal level, Switzerland, just um, the, the federal government says that each state or canton has the right to deal with the prohibited stuff as they wish. So funnily enough, there are some states where purchasing a fully auto gun is, takes less time and is easier under certain circumstances than purchasing this here. Why? For the category B guns, this, the, where you need a standard authorization, um, the standard purchasing uh, or standard purchase uh, permit. Um, it's, this is regulated at federal level, so no state can deviate from this. Why? I think it's good. If you want to buy a normal gun, um, there cannot be any, some states that are stricter than others. So you have to have some minimum standards. So the normal purchasing permit for normal guns, like a semi-auto SIG 550, or a semi-auto 416, for what concerns me, um, what you need is, you can see it here at the bottom, um, sorry, right here, you need your ID, a criminal extract record, and a PDF with just your details, where you live, etc. What you don't need is a justification to buy the gun, okay? You don't need to say if you're buying it because you, you use it in Call of Duty and you think it's cool, or because you want to fucking kill, I don't know, some, some rabbits. I'm not sure that you can anyway, but you don't have to tell anything. You can just, that it, it's, it's funny, they assume, that the assumption holds that um, unless you give a special reason, because there is a field where you can write the reason why you buy it, if you do not write anything, the normal assumption is that you're buying it for sport or collection. That's it. So no one has to give a goddamn shit about why you want to buy the gun. And that's why, theoretically, the only thing that blocks you from buying a gun is the criminal record. Uh, this is a paper that you need to order uh, online or uh, at the post office. Costs 20 bucks. Takes a couple of days to arrive and it just shows if you're a criminal or not. It's ex essentially, they just look into the database. Did you commit any crimes? If it's empty, you're good to go. If it's not empty, um, you could have some issues. If it's just a speeding thing, one is okay, two critical. If you have 10 entries, all for speeding, you may have some issues. Not a big deal, um, but think about it. If you're a serious collector, or if you like guns, and you have this in the back of your mind, um, and you're spending a lot of money for guns, you are incentivized not to become a criminal, because at some point they may take away your guns. Because by the time you purchase the 10th gun, if you have become a criminal in the meantime, they will notice it, and they will confiscate retroactively all of the other guns. So funnily enough, gun people, which are just portrayed by the media as idiots, tend to uh, give a damn about their investments. Uh, they earn money normally, usually by working. So they have an extra incentive not to become a criminal because otherwise you cannot enjoy your hobby. If you're a car guy and you just speed and you kill people, they, if you want to buy a car, no one asks for the criminal extract. So you can buy cars even if you're a fucking, I mean, not a serial killer, but I mean, you don't have this incentive to really be clean on, on the crime side. Brackets closed. So uh, the standard permit um, to buy the category, uh, category B guns, uh, which is semi-auto or whatever type, no caliber, no magazine constraints, no length constraints, it just have to be semi-auto and not converted from full auto. This standard permit, as I said, ID, criminal record, the PDF, send it to the police in a couple of weeks. Normally they do an extra background check, I don't know what the fuck they do. Um, maybe they check if you do some house violence or whatever. Maybe they're just like, they just chill and just wait. It costs you 50 bucks when it comes back, so overall you pay 70 bucks. But on the permit, you have three slots, so you can buy three guns at a time. Um, if you wait up, if you're strategic, if you send the guns that you want to purchase to the right dealer and you collect them all at once, three guns, 70 bucks, means the paperwork costs you, yeah, you do the math, a little bit more than 20 bucks per gun, which is okay. The criminal record is valid for six months or something like this, so if you want to buy another three guns down the road, you don't have to purchase it again. You just have to fork out another 50 bucks for the police authorization to buy. So it becomes cheaper if you just uh, have placed the purchases in a strategic way. For the special authorization, as I said, which varies from state to state, um, you need a justification or you need to pass some special um, 
sort of background check, interviews, etc. Which is okay. Um, if you're talking full auto 416, grenade launcher, whatever you know, cool thing you have, uh, can you were able to purchase? Um, I'm fine with that. As of right now, I think, and I put it at the top, the distribution is probably 90% of permits are the normal one, whereas 10% are the special authorizations. Special authorization are already given to those who the police deems really to be a serious collector or some serious gun guy. I am one of them. I went to the whole hassle here in the canton where I live in Zurich. Um, if you want to buy suppressors, full auto, stuff like this, they want you to collect, they want you to have a minimum amount of guns collected over a minimum amount of period to show that you're not just buying uh, 10 used Glocks just to purchase a full R416. Uh, you know, this, this kind of games they find out. I think it's totally fair. I don't see any reason to change it. There is no crimes committed with these special authorization guns whatsoever. Um, they are only for collection purposes. There are some further uh, issues like the police comes by every now and then, checks for full auto guns. Um, so the whole ecosystem, uh, the as is situation, is very well regulated. As a matter of fact, in Switzerland, even if you're a hardcore leftist and you ask um, mass shootings, gun crime, they hardly ever have an argument. There is no gun crime. People enjoy their guns, they go shooting, they have beers, they stay with friends. It's a tradition here. No real reason to change it from a societal perspective, nor from a crime perspective. Now. The change from the fucking European Union is the following. The classification of guns will change. The 2B classification, as you see, category A will not only be full auto and converted to full auto, but they will also inherit some guns from the former category B, which will move over to the category A. Uh, the category B will still exist, but it's going to be like a bastardized category B. Um, and this has some deep implication. What does it mean? The standard permit, and if you remember, I just said 90% of the weapons are sold with the standard permit. This will only hold for guns like this, like long guns with a magazine of 10 rounds, or handguns with a magazine no bigger than 20 rounds. Okay, so for handguns, no big deal, which ironically probably are the ones that are used to commit more crimes. So this modest change occurs with the guns that are used more to commit crimes, I assume, because this one is just not that handy and, and big and general. So, a standard permit, so where you do not require any justification uh, to just re request it, the purchasing permit, will only hold for you will only allow you to buy this gun with a magazine of 10 rounds. Um, I must say that in Switzerland, the standard competition that we have assume that you have 20 rounds or 18 rounds. Um, therefore, with a magazine of 10 rounds, not even in the standard public challenges that are held every year, I don't even know how it's going to work. So. From the onset, you're likely to have some issues with the fucking 10-round magazine. Not only this, the 10-round mags cost a fortune. And if you want to retrofit the SIG 550 to 10-round mags, it's about 100 bucks a pop. So fuck this. If you have the, the SIG P57, so the old assault rifle, I don't even know if they manufactured the 10-round magazine because they're useless. Okay? So if you want to just be an owner of standard permit guns, okay, which means not that much paperwork, no justification, you're going to have some significant uh, trade-offs. So, as said, semi-autos will still be allowed, only with a magazine of 10 rounds. And then comes another point. Um, some category B guns, as of today, which will be moved to the category A guns, include this exact same gun, only with this magazine. So, you're allowed to have a magazine bigger than 10 rounds for your category B guns, which turns the whole thing into probably a hybrid category A thing. Um, if you want to buy a gun, I think with the 20 round mag, you need a special authorization now, because it's a prohibited firearm. Magazines per se, bigger than 20 rounds, will be prohibited, but um, they say that they will hand out special authorization like there's no tomorrow, just to, just to you know, to bridge the gap. So what is the idea now? Let's just remember that the special authorization, I forgot to say, it costs a fucking 150 bucks, okay, in general. Because you're dealing with special police people that are giving you a special authorization, so it costs more than double. Moreover, the special authorization has some, has some state differences. Some states are more stricter than the other. So suddenly, if you want to take, a, take part of the normal competition, this motherfucker here may mean a whole lot of paperwork and money. 
and, and SIG magazines are already not cheap. Like this. So, um, we just said more 90% of the guns, a big fraction thereof, or probably 100%, will essentially become category A guns, either because they have big magazine or also because they are short guns. Category A guns under the new European regulation include guns which are have retractable stocks or folding stocks that can uh, make it 60 centimeters, cent 60 centimeters or less. So SBRs, uh, regardless of the barrel length, if they have a folding stock or retractable stock, will become automatically category A guns, not even uh, regardless of whether they have a 20, 10, 1500 round magazine. So. The reality will be that in the future, probably, um, your gun will have to be 61 centimeters or more, have only a 10 round magazine, this will allow you to just buy guns without the government having to sniff around and, and ask for justifications or not. In the future in Switzerland, if you want to just have this 20 round magazine and shoot normally, you will have to either go to the hassle of special authorization, which will in turn now be per se modified because they will only hand it out if you uh, belong to a shooting club, which is unconstitutional because you will be forced to join a shooting club, but the shooting club is not forced to accept you. So how the fuck is that going to work out? If you don't want to join a shooting club because you're just uh, maybe you're handicapped or you just enjoy collecting guns, you will have to show that you regularly use the gun. So you don't have to belong to a shooting club, but uh, you have to show that every now and then you go to the shooting range. I don't know how they're gonna lock that, um, how it's gonna work out, nobody knows. So they say, don't worry, you don't have to belong to a shooting club, but you have to use the gun every now and then, and just show that you're shooting once a year, once two years, I don't know. Why is it shit? Um, well, essentially, I don't wanna belong to a club because it costs money, and if you don't never go there, they're gonna kick you out, or maybe they will not even accept you. Why don't I wanna shoot guns regularly and have to show this to the government? Because I'm, I fucking work in consulting. Maybe I have to go to Singapore for one year, who knows? What if I just, that year, I'm not able to, to just go to the shooting range? What are you gonna say then? Are you gonna come home and just, you know, confiscate 30,000 francs of guns? Nobody knows. Worst part is that the government is being smart about this. This time, only the highest level things are regulated at the parliament level. The remaining things are regulated by sort of like a federal, I don't know what's it called, Ferorno, like a directive. Uh, the federal directive can be changed on the fly every four years, every year, every two weeks. They don't have to vote it in parliament, so they can change some stuff on the fly and make your life a whole lot fucking harder without you even having a right to say no. And before it was not like this, before everything was regulated, the, the whole, pre nearly 100% of the gun laws were reg regulated at federal level through the parliament. Now the parliament will only say at high level um, that the government release further details, for example, on the justification uh, that you need to show when you want to purchase a gun. And then, you know, you're looking at maybe another leftist politician who comes and says, ah, oh, by the way, we're going to change um, the frequency where you have to show that you go to the, to the gun range. One year is not enough, six months. And you're going to say anything about it. You just have to, you know, uh, shove it down, they shove it down your throat and that's it. This is essentially the smart thing that they're making, uh, the smart move. They want, you, they want you to classify, like, pretty much 90% of the guns, they want them to classify as prohibited guns, uh, so that they can just regulate the prohibited guns without parliament's approval. And this is a smart thing, if they would just want to disarm population and just take away responsibility from the citizen, as they are doing with many other things, not only guns. To sum it up, as a situation, 90% are bought with a normal permit, which allows you to buy any semi-auto gun. Uh, in the future, there will be a, um, a change. The semi-auto guns will depend on which magazine they have, which lengths. There will be class A firearms, which cost more. You don't know if you're going to get them, and they can change regulation without parliamentary approval. So the whole things become very murky. And for the average shooter, Average John that wants just to shoot his, his SIG 550 with his friends, maybe he's 60, he's retired, he just wants to hang out at the local gun range and have some white wine. These guys will think twice in the future, probably the, just the tradition will die out because of paperwork and regulation with regard to the max. It's very smart, okay? Um, you know, working in consulting, if I was on the other side, I would probably say, 
you know, use this little tactic, you know, take a bit from left and right, and it will short, it will die out by its own. Not do, do not do any big bang stuff because people will reject this. Do it in a sneaky way. Uh, over the long term, people will not notice it. You know, it's essentially as when you take the frog and you put it in the boiling water, it jumps out. If you put it in the cold water and you boil it slowly, the fucking frog will die because it doesn't notice. That's what they want to do with us. Now, uh, the arguments to fucking change um, the gun law. Um, they say the Paris attacks, but a clan, whatever. Uh, so let's keep in mind. Attacks in Paris, okay? Um, terrorist attacks. There have been some in Germany, in Paris, in Barcelona, in Sweden. Um, not in Switzerland. So I don't see how changing Swiss gun law in general will make Switzerland and Europe safer. But yeah, I think you really have to be especially stupid to not understand this. Nevertheless, they say that the guns used in France were, uh, I don't know, they were AKs. So AKs in theory, without folding stock, and if you buy with a 10 round magazine, and you buy 10 10 round magazine in Switzerland, you're perfectly legal, okay? And you can kill as many people as you want, you just have to be skilled in changing magazine. You don't need a fucking, you know, MIT degree to learn to change some mags. So, whatever, let's not go into detail because it feels really too much of a stupid discussion. Um, they say some politicians in Switzerland, which are traditionally pro-gun and are jumping on every train to just uh, limit gun possession and make life harder for us, are saying it will limit suicides. So of course, a 10 round magazine or a 20 round magazine will definitely limit suicides because you know, after the first bullet, unless you're really stupid and unlucky, you're gonna have nine bullets left, so you'll probably die anyway. And a suicide means you're killing yourself, so they just they should limit it to a zero round magazine because even one round is legal. So the suicide argument is stupid. And I think that if people wanna commit suicide, they will do it any other way, they'll jump under a train. Uh, at least if they shoot themselves in their house, they don't disrupt people going to work, the, the train pilot is not traumatized, so, I mean, it's, it seems um, a bit ironic, um, but you, the government should not be a fucking nanny state. If one life, if someone's life is fucked and they want to just get over with it, who's the government or a fucking leftist politician to, to just have to change with it? So the, the suicide argument is a lie, especially because in fucking Japan, which has the highest suicide rate in the world, you're not even allowed to buy a fucking knife. Japan has the toughest gun laws, there is no gun crime, not even gangs use guns, and they have the highest suicide rate. So, again, please, um, intelligent politician, that you're just making money while it's same bullshit, come explain to me why Streeter gun laws will lead to less crime when Japan, which is OECD country or whatever, I mean, first word, highly developed, high education, modern economy, no guns, why do they have the highest uh, suicide rate? Explain to me how this will change in Switzerland. Um, if you can convince me I'm wrong, I'll offer you a beer. Um, in general, so for, um, to reduce, so the suicide argument is stupid from the onset, I don't wanna go into detail. The terror argument is more retarded, okay, because Think about this, Swiss, Europe and Switzerland in the middle of Europe, they have this um, whole free movement of people going on. So there is an outside border of uh, Europe, but inside Europe there is no borders. The Schengen, so-called Schengen Agreement defines this. Um, you can move freely from Switzerland to uh, Finland, to France, whatever. There is no borders. You just pass by uh, between Switzerland and Germany. You just see the, the former buildings, but there is no one standing there. In Switzerland, the only thing that they check at the border is merchandise, okay? There is free movement of people, but not free movement of merchandise, so they just check if you bought too much wine, too many cigarettes, and so on and so forth. Like old Nigel Farage used to say, is in Europe, uh, there is also the free movement of Kalashnikovs, because from the fucking Balkans, they're, they're pulling over guns by the minute. Once they enter the, the European outside border, there is no checks. So I could probably put this gun in the truck, drive all the way to fucking Norway, or I don't know where, uh, Denmark, whatever, go on a killing spree, probably no one will check my, my trunk, by the time I enter Germany, no one will give a shit, they don't have the right to do so. So, think about this, um, there is terrorists coming in from fucking Syria, the Balkan route from Morocco into Spain, into Italy, Europe has lost control over the outside border, 
We have millions of fucking migrants from Afghanistan, which are just coming in without papers, reclaiming refugee status. They just, you know, dive into the, the criminal scene. Guns are really easy to get from the Balkans because of the Yugoslav war. And they just, they go on a rampage. And you want to tell me that to reduce this terror, the most effective thing is to limit this to 10 rounds? Have the police got massive confiscation? Have you to pay you on your yearly challenge uh, shooting competition? You go with your 10 round. You have to be sort of, you have to go through all of the hassle. You, you, I wake up at 6 a.m., I go to work, I come back in the evening, every day, 200, more than 200 days per year. So me limiting my right to own the fucking magazine will make the stuff better, but people who have to do their job right at the fucking border are not doing it, and we're letting fucking Afghan migrants come in. And these are the people, there's Muslim migrants, uh, refugees, that do go on shooting rampage, or radicalized um, Muslim terrorists, which have born here from parents that came in from Lebanon, I don't know. So the whole discussion is, that there is a little bias on things. It's not myself. My, I'm myself, I'm not the issue, and it's not the gun. The problem uh, is the fact that people can come in and there is no fucking borders to check on them. They need no papers to claim refugee status. They just, uh, you know, processing their fucking request takes years. They just go into the criminal life, do whatever they want, and then in Brussels, the best thing that they can do, instead of closing the borders and making sure that only people with papers can come in, is saying that this is the problem. So this fucking gun, I saw Rifle 90, it's called 90 because it's here since 1990. It has never been a problem. Swiss citizens with a fucking assault rifle 90, it has been a problem now. Now, and what is the most exceptional thing that happened? Well, the fucking refugees that came in. Refugees. And you want to tell me that suddenly, to make people feel more safe, we need, this is the problem. I'm, I'm speechless, okay? How people can be this stupid. But then again, we're lucky because here we are in Switzerland and unlike in France or Germany where the central government says something and, well, unless you go in the streets like the Gilets Jaunes, uh, the Germans are more stupid, unfortunately. You just say yes and you just swallow it down and don't do anything. Uh, here in Switzerland, we can do something about it. And people are pissed at the EU for more than one reason. The gun issue being probably just the tip of the iceberg. And I suspect there will be just a cross-political movement um, that will vote yes on this referendum for a simple reason. The government is portraying this, and his, I summarize here in the government's lies. Um, the government is saying, we'll be kicked out of Schengen we need Schengen, because the Schengen Agreement allows the police to do background checks at European level. So, again, if they catch a fucking migrant that uh, come from Germany, came to Switzerland, they can know that he came from Germany. Wow. Wouldn't it be better if we didn't come into Europe in the first place? Okay, I don't think I need to ask the question, but now that we have the fucking influx of the fucking refugees, at least uh, we can know where they come from. Wow, what a big deal. How many lives will be saved by that? once the shooting is already done or they already ran with a track over people. So the politicians say that we need Schengen because of these uh, little things and we need the free movement of people because it's important for the economy, okay? Um, well, I think, you know, if you study a little history, Europe became what it is after World War II without free movement of people and without even free movement of capital. Just with a bit of export coordination, we had the golden age, uh, of European capitalism after World War II. Now the whole thing is stagnating. I don't see any advantages in the free movement of people because I don't mind having to stay 30 minutes at the border when I go to Germany. I don't go to Germany that often and I don't think it will be hamper the economy that much. Um, so there's nothing that with technology or a bit of goodwill can be solved. They say we'll be kicked out of Schengen if people vote uh, against the law. This itself is not true because if Switzerland does not implement the law, or uh, it can do two things. First of all, you can say that it doesn't need to adapt the law because the law that it already has in place fulfills uh, sort of the ultimate purpose. So this will be the first thing that politicians should have done. Some uh, told the government about this, of course, they didn't want to hear it. Next thing, if Switzerland wants to adopt a law and people just don't vote against it, um, there will be just a committee that will analyze the issue and then they will see what to do next. It is possible that Switzerland is excluded from Schengen, 
but from a pragmatic perspective, I think the EU needs this agreement um, with Switzerland at least as much as Switzerland needs it with the EU. Because Switzerland being in the middle of fucking Europe, you know, if you go from Germany to Italy or from whatever places, you pass by Switzerland. So it's a vital piece of the whole uh, transport and logistical puzzle for the economy. And therefore, at some point, if we get pragmatic, they will just not care about the fucking gun and keep Switzerland in, and um, whatever. So there's no big deal. Uh, we, you don't have to be always first in class and implement stricter laws just to you know, be cool at the table. You can also represent your citizen, represent their concerns, and a pragmatic solution will come, okay? If I don't see this, I mean, I will not vote the first law that Simonetta Sumaruga uh, offers because I don't think she tried to bargain in anything at all. The next lie is the Lex Helvetica. So they say that they did a special exception for this. What does it mean? After service, uh, if you fulfill the requirements to bring this gun home with the 20 round mag, you will be allowed to do so by terms of the normal purchasing permit. So even though under new law, in 10 years down the road, this will be a class A gun, you still be allowed to take it home as a class B gun. But now here's the catch. If you sell it, okay, or if you want to buy the gun from your, your neighbor, which was a soldier and now sells it, it will be treated as a class A gun. So it's only a class B gun for the first time transfer. If I, in an accident, lose an arm and want to sell it, no one can buy this gun as a class B gun. They will need the special authorization again. Essentially, again, by the back door, they're trying to make your life harder just without any, um, any, any practical reason. So the, the exception that Simonetta Sumaruga per se um, carved out is not an exception at all. I don't see any advantage to it whatsoever, okay? Because it cannot be that this gun in my hands is okay, and another soldier which served the same service with me, for him to buy this gun, he has to be treated as a potential terrorist and give a justification on why he wants to do so. This, this is inconsequential, and they don't accept this. And I think a lot of people do not find this acceptable at all. Um, even worse, I don't even know if I want to give this on to my, to my child. I don't know how they're going to have to deal with it. So the whole thing doesn't stand up. And this Lex Helvetica is just fucking smoke uh, in the eyes of the people. Um, I'm not even mentioning that when we Switzerland joined Schengen, the government uh, ensured us that there would be no further um, implementation of gun laws, European-related gun laws. This per se was a lie. I'm not even going to the fact that we already voted on an initiative uh, from the leftists to ban guns and do shit. People voted no. I'm not even going to the detail. The parliament itself said they don't want people to have to register old guns from, I don't know, whatever year because there were too many, too difficult. And under this European directive, people will be forced to do so. So if your grandpa has an old carabiner or whatever in the, I don't know, stored where, theoretically, you should register it. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Potentially, you'll be treated as a criminal if they find out. I don't know how, but it changes uh, the perspective. You're not, the government does not have to justify, it's you who have to justify. This is unacceptable because when I go to service in the military every year for three or four weeks, the government entrusts me with this weapon to defend my country. And suddenly after service, when I want to buy the same gun, I'm treated as a potential terrorist. And this is unacceptable. So, it's a fairly long video, um, a fairly big amount of rants. Um, I urge you to just consider the implications of voting um, for the referendum. You should vote against this law if you're a gun collector, if you like Swiss traditions. You should also vote in this referendum if you want to send a message to the EU and show that we will not accept any regulation without saying anything. They are too used to this method with all of the other countries which is not say, always say yes and amen, starting from Germany. It's a powerful tool, Brussels. Many European politicians are on purpose um, delegating decision to Brussels because uh, at national level, no one can challenge them. So it's very easy if you're being lobbied to just manage to squeeze the, to sneak the decision to Brussels. You're gonna get your lobby money, directive comes in, no one can challenge it, very easy. With Switzerland, we have to send a message that we don't like this shit. Uh, Europe, if at all, should just care on single market issue, uh, where indeed it can add some value. But everything else, security policy, social policy, these people are just too far from the reality uh, where pe normal people live in, and hence we should not, no, under no circumstances, accept this uh, 
this law or any other law that affects uh, social or security policies, when they have tragically failed to provide security for European people during the refugee crisis, they have tragically failed uh, to provide social security after this whole globalization um, wave that has left many people that have paid taxes and grew up here without any uh, outlook of a normal life with decent money. Um, we do not have to entrust them with this decision. Um, if you're wondering what kind of people in general um, are behind the gun community in Switzerland, um, this is also something that is never, never put into context. I myself um, did not tell a lot about my background. I started at um, one of the, the best ranked Swiss business schools, the University of St. Gallen, background in economics. I moved over for my postgraduate studies to the United Kingdom. I have a uh, degree always in the field of political economy from the London School of Economics. So I myself, uh, from a pure academic level, with a background in um, economics and political economy, can understand many moves that are done uh, by governments with regard to policy. But by no means I'm f <laughs> am I fooled, because these people that make these moves, well, they have no experience in, in real work, real life. They just sit there, maybe they studied politics, they studied uh, whatever easy stuff, just to have a degree, they sit there, they release some papers, and they impact 300 million people. Um, I am representative for the gun community, but I'm no redneck or hillbilly or just some you know, retarded stuff. I mean, I work at the highest level in finance, um, consulting in finance. I have studied at the best universities that Europe has to offer, and I would challenge any politician to sit at the table and discuss the issue with me and just explain me, you know, in tangible terms why this is an advantage. Um, the statistics speak against them, that's why they don't use them. Uh, history speaks against them. Uh, what, say, what other politicians have said in the past speak against them because they're contradicting uh, themselves. So I challenge any politician to sit down and just discuss how the new 2B situation is making our life more secure when the problems are clearly elsewhere. The problem is Schengen to begin with, and I think quitting Schengen would per se limit the influx of these fucking migrants, and by the fact that there are less migrants, probably there are less rampages by truck or by gun. Because my neighbors, my community, the gun community, has the highest respect for the law and is incentivized to do so by the of the current setup, which does not need any change. Um, Apologies for the very long video. I hope uh, it provided some added value um, within the context of the current discussion. Uh, please share it with your Swiss friends. And let's just try to, um, to put all the facts on the table um, because the discussion and debate that will be out there will be a dirty debate. They will throw fake news, fake facts, the real facts they will not use because they are against them. So they will try to twist the narrative. Um, we need to be ready to discuss why the current setup is good and we need to point the finger at the right problems.